Hello my little butterflies and this video is going to be my September wrap up. Hi guys, I missed y'all so much. It's been so long since I sat in front of this camera. Like, I have neglected my channel. It hasn't been that long since I posted a video, but it, it feels like it's been forever. It's, I think it's been like two weeks since I posted a video. So that's a long time to me, especially when I have no excuse why I wasn't sitting in front of this camera. I can't say it's work because I'm not working right now. I'm doing my stay at home mom's leg for now. Uh, so I have no excuse. Like, I, mean, I, haven't, I, just, I just haven't felt like sitting in front of the camera. I've been watching other people's videos, but I had to make my own and post my own. And it was on the back. It's in my mind. I didn't do some videos. It's been a while, but I just couldn't force myself to do it. I've been hooked on the games. So I've been like a game head like the last week or so. I started playing Grand Theft Auto all over again at this point, And I just, I need to come out with another one. This is like the third time I just started this one over. I'm so sick of it. Alright, I'm ready for a new one. But um, I've been sitting in front of the game. I've been looking at TV and I've been binge watching Dr. Phil. Let's just do it separate because I want to film videos anyway. If y'all want to look at it still, you're going to look at it. If not, you'll skip past it. So anyway, in September, I read seven books. And neither one of them was the book that was on my TBR. Only one. But none of the other books I read was on my TBR last month. Oh my God. Like, I started reading a book that was on my TBR last month, but I didn't finish it until this month. So that's going to be my October wrap up. But anyway, in September, my TBR, I wanted to do series September where I was going to finish or continue series that I had already started <laughs> that did not happen so that was a fail um, and most of the books that I read were graphic novels so yeah the first book that I read in September and it was a collection of poetry and I also got it from Edelweiss and it's called a place called no home a place called no homeland by um, Kai Ching Tong I think I'm saying it correctly and it is a collection of poetry that follows the author, who is a transgender uh, female. Is that how you say it? He, he was born a male and he's a female now, so I guess it's transgender female. Yeah, he's a transgender female and follows him from when he was younger to his adulthood. Everything he had to go to, being criticized and stoned and just going through a tough time. Rape, everything that he had to go through. And I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Um, I enjoyed it. This is my first time reading something about a transgender person i never read a book like that before so it was very it was new to me and it was very eye-opening because I, I knew like you know people through the lgbt community they get criticized all the time they get stoned they get bullied you know all the time just because of what their sexual preferences even though it doesn't it shouldn't matter to everybody else but obviously i don't understand why it does because it's not your business but I have never read something like that and it was very like heavy like it was just if you have a problem with with like rape and like just just like tough subjects because there were times where it was like these really graphic like rough sex scenes so if you have an issue with that this isn't the book for you but if you don't mind that you should definitely pick it up so it was very like really heavy and it was very serious of course so it it, it was just I can't think of the word. Like, it was good, but it's just, I can't think of the word that I want to use to describe it. And it's like, oh, it's my tongue, I can't get it out. But it's, it was just very thick and it was very emotional to read it. Looking at, because I just, I felt bad because 
he she she was really downing herself like she felt like she deserved to go through this because she was different she felt like she was disgusted and like she just felt like that's what she deserved and i just wanted to just just wanted to go in and hug her and be like hey, you don't deserve stuff like that so it's, it's it's very thick and it's very emotional it's very so but i think you guys should really pick it up especially if you are interested like curious about the transgender community because i know why i'm like really i have a lot of curiosity like about certain things that i want to ask so i don't want to come off as like insensitive or just you know being nosy like i don't want to ask this personal questions that you might feel like it's too much but i'm like i'm really curious about certain things because um my fiance has a cousin she's a transgender male and i always want to ask like would you rather would you be offended if i still refer to you as she or you know does it matter to you about you she or he like you know what i mean like that's what i'm really curious about because i'm not sure what that means like what does that mean like i don't know how to answer that like i don't know what that means like i don't know how to if, like, you know, like the actual surgical procedure part, she went all the way. Like, she's completely male now. So, I just, I always have, like, a lot of questions about just certain things like that. And, but I just feel like it might be too personal and you might get offended because I'm asking these questions. So, I just, I don't know if that's offensive or not, but it might be. I don't know. I'm just, I'm a curious person, so I always like to ask questions, but sometimes I don't want to feel like I'm getting too far into your business. The next book that I read was a graphic novel, and it's Vacancy by Jen Lee. And this is also a book that I got from Edelweiss. And I think the... I think the press company is, is No Browse Press, I think is what it's called. And uh, I received those books from Edelweiss, um, so I read it on my Kindle. And it is the first book in a series, the first book in a series of graphic novels, and I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. Now, my issue with Vacancy was I really, really enjoyed the actual storyline, but the graphics weren't all that good to me. And I also, the thing with the storyline, I like the storyline, but I just didn't know the characters like I didn't have any background on the characters so that's why I ended up getting three out of five but I did a review for it so you guys should go look at my review I'll link it in the eyes so you guys can see it well, I also did a review for um a place called No Homeland I'll link that on the eye too so you guys can go check that out oh and about it sorry guys I didn't tell you what it was about but vacancy it is set in this post-apocalyptic world but we follow animals not humans right so cute though I like it's gonna be cutesy but it's like it's serious though but it's cutesy uh, we follow these three animals. One is a dog, a raccoon, and a deer. The dog is Simon. We just go, like, we start the story off with him in the house alone by himself. His owners have disappeared and gone somewhere. They left him behind. That's not like we know nothing about his past life and what happened to his owners for sure. But um, he's in this house with still a fence up, and then his deer and his raccoon are already traveling together, and they want his garbage bag of food that is in his yard and then they end up traveling together and trying to find humans and what happens to all of the humans they hear that there's this town where humans are still living and they're trying to get there but on the way on this journey there's a lot of like you know roughneck animals that are kind of like the gangs that are you know trying to kill them take whatever food they have get rid of them just like in a human post-apocalyptic thing like usually with zombies everybody has their own little groups and instead of everybody banding together like fighting against each other that's what's going on with these animals so that is what that is about so it's very cutesy but it's serious at the same time because it's post-apocalyptic animals the third book that i read in september is garbage night by jim lee and that is the second book to vacancy i gave this one two out of five stars now with this one, the graphics were really good. I really liked it. It's really cutesy, but the storyline was off to me. I didn't. The storyline needed some help, and I still knew nothing about the characters in the second book. So you know, yeah, did not like it <laughs> because of that. Now, if like I said in my review, if I could put Vacancy and Garbage Night together, take the graphics from Garbage Night and the storyline from Vacancy, it would have got a four out of five stars. Just because I still don't know anything about the characters. So if we would have had a little background about all the characters, that would have made it a five out of five stars. It just it needs some um what you call it. It, it, it needs some picking at to get it together. The fourth book that I read is another graphic novel that I got from Edelweiss, and it is A Castle in England by Jamie Rose and a whole lot of other damn people that I'm not about to say, but, you know, you guys can see it when you check out the book. I want to give this a one out of five stars. I did not like it. Now, this is kind of... I, I actually requested it because it sounded like a really good concept. It's like a graphic novel mixed in with a collection of short stories or an anthology. So we got five different, is it five? I think it's five. Five different short stories but in like a graphic novel setting. And everything happened in like the exact same castle over so many centuries. And I thought that was going to be, it sounds like a really good concept but it was 
so boring. Like <laughs> the graphics weren't all that. It could have some comics, like some of the stories, the short stories. Some of the graphics in those were better than others, but it wasn't even amazing. Um, the storyline was really boring. I was like so bored reading it. I, I had to force myself to keep the green coming. It's just a graphic novel because we're not going to DNF a graphic novel. We're going to finish it. But I already knew where it was going. It was boring. And then after each um, short story slash comic, whatever you want to call it, after each one, they did these little facts after. But the it, this was a art copy that I got, so they might have edited it different in the actual print version, but they weren't in order, and it's like, this doesn't really help me understand what was going on in the actual comics better, so maybe, at first I thought it was going to be a good idea, then I realized this isn't in order, and it's not really making a difference to me for the story, so that could have just been cut out. It was just all around boring, and I just, I wouldn't recommend it. Sorry, but not sorry. The fifth story that I read was What Does Consent Really Mean by Pete Willis and a lot of other people. And I gave this one four out of five stars. Now, I picked this book up, so I'm like, that seems really, you know, that, that seems like a really good idea to do a graphic novel about consent and what no means no and how do you know if you're consenting and if the person you're with is actually consenting to have sex with you. And I thought that's a really good idea, especially for younger readers, like in those teenage years. Even like when you're like 9, 10 and you're just learning about, you just had the birds and the bees talk about what sex is about. This is a good thing for people to, for young audience to read. Obviously reading this, you can obviously tell that it was actually, it was really targeted toward the younger um, age group. You can really tell about how it was written because at first I was like, what the heck? like common sense but I'm like okay you could tell I guess if I was at this age it, it would be like oh okay enlightening but now it's like this is kind of drug sense but you know you could tell it's talking to a younger age group which is really really good um I think it answered a lot of questions that younger people would have like such as peer pressure as in a well all my friends are doing it so you have to do it with me because my friends are doing it or well they do it like this on a porno, so I mean, we have to do it like this. And it actually answered a lot of questions because I understand people, even though I think adults are like really uh, into this thing where they see porn stars doing this, so they feel like that is what I have to do to perform with you. And that's not what it is. Porn is a performance. It's not a goal. It's not reality, you know. And I think that really set that tone for the younger group so they know that now before they even get older and try to do all the stuff that they do on there. So they answered a lot of questions for as in at that aspect for the younger community. And if you're being peer pressured by your boyfriend or your girlfriend to do something that you don't really want to do, but you don't want to say no because you don't want to seem like you don't want to seem like you lame or something. So that also answers that the peer pressure thing. Period. That's like a big thing when you're younger, like when you're a younger teenager and you're just starting to want to, you know, do do the butt. <laughs> so, I think this is really good for younger uh, age groups to read, especially those that are confused about do they want to do it because they want to do it, or do they want to do it because everybody else is doing it, or my boyfriend wants me to do it, and I don't want to do these things. And I and if I say no, then I'm going to be an outcast. You know, because when people say everybody's doing it, everybody's not doing it. Especially when you're making up stories about, oh, I do this and I do that and that's not what's going on. That was also included in the graphic novel. I just thought that was really, really amazing. I just thought this was really good. I gave it four out of five stars. The sixth book that I read was A Justified Bitch by H.G. McKinnis. And this was a book that I got from NetGalley. And I actually got a physical copy from the publisher themselves. I finally finished it. That was the one book that was on my TV to finish that I actually read. And I gave that a four out of five stars. I did a full review for this book. I just, I loved it. And it's a first book in a series called The Las Vegas, A Las Vegas Mystery. Yeah. And oh my God, yes, I loved every second of this book. Like I loved it. Like it was just small things, I guess, that made me give it four instead of out of five stars, which was just, I didn't really feel emotionally connected with the characters like we got a background of them so you knew about them but I just still didn't I didn't feel that 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 little piece of oh I feel so sorry for you I didn't feel empathy for the characters or sympathy uh, I didn't feel I didn't feel for the characters that was one of the things I didn't I didn't really like in the book it was just small stuff that nitpicked that's why I gave it four instead of five but 
other than that, it was amazing. Like, I loved it. It's a murder mystery that is set in Las Vegas. It's an adult book, but I said, even if you're just always into YA, I think this is a really good book if you're wanting to try the adult genre, but you're not sure where to start. I think this is a good book to bridge that gap between YA and adult because it was just so good and so much stuff was going on. You didn't really think about oh my god, this is not YA, this is adult, and I don't like to read adult. It was just amazing. I guess it was more, it, it's more re relatable to my adult life. Not that I'm going through any of the shit that's going on in this book, just that it's adult characters and not people still in high school, you know? It's this murder mystery where our main Kellen Helen, our main character Helen, she is a hoarder. Her husband got, had a tragic accident and died like years before this, and she just has like this this mental unstability going on where she still sees him and she still talks to him and she thinks he's still there and she wants everybody else to think he's still there her neighbor got brutally murdered like just gruesome you have to read the book because it was so good but her neighbor got gruesomely murdered and she the police find her finger on Helen's porch so that makes her suspect number one okay but just as fast as Helen is clear from being a suspect, she's a suspect once again because of another character that's got murdered and they think Helen did that too. So she's right back into being the number one suspect. The story follows us trying to find out who the murderer is and to see if Helen is or if she isn't the murderer. That is pretty much what the book is, but it is so good. It's so much goes on. It's so much family drama happening that's going to blow your mind. It's amazing. Like, you guys really need to pick it up and read it. It is so good. And the last book that I read in the month of September, and it was a graphic novel, and that is Star Wars Dark Vader Volume 1 by Kieran Gillian. I'm, I'm pretty sure I didn't say the name right. Yeah, now this is a Kindle book that I got that I actually got for free because I'm a Prime member. So some of the books you get to have for free, kind of like check out and check back in. And I get a squad of five stars, y'all. Now, I was never a Star Wars person. Like, I never read anything about Star Wars and I never watched any of the Star Wars movies, okay? The most I know about Star Wars is what I hear people talk about and the little bit that Family Guys does when they like reenacting Star Wars. But other than that, I know nothing about Star Wars, okay? So reading this was so good. The, gra the first thing when I first started reading, I'm like, damn, these graphics are good. The graphics was really good. The storyline was really good. I really, really enjoyed this, okay? I really enjoyed reading about Darth Vader. That is crazy to say because he's a villain. He's one of the villains, okay? So it's like you wouldn't expect you to be like, yeah, okay, I love Darth Vader. I was cheering Darth Vader ass on in this book, okay? Like, I was on his side. I was like, yes, get it, kill him, do what you gotta do. I was his, like, cheerleader, okay? So that's weird to say. When an author can make me cheer on a villain and be their number one fan, you did a good-ass job. So I really enjoyed that comic, and you guys should really go pick it up because it was so good, and it really got me into the whole Star Wars thing and I want to know more about now I'm not saying I want to go watch the movies maybe I'll watch like the new movie that came out the new versions because I can't do the old I can't can't do it I may like I may not but I do want to read the rest of the volumes surrounded by Darth Vader and I think I'm gonna be on his side if I actually watch the movie just say it okay you guys that is my wrap up for September where well, I only read one of the books that was on my TBR but how often does that happen and I'm not upsetting myself because my TBR is not necessarily my agenda I have to read these books and check them off it's just so I have an idea what I might want to read if you know I might, might have read Justified Bitch and didn't want to read anything that was on my TV or after, but it's just so I have an idea, so I'm not wondering, I don't know what I want to read this month, you know? So, that's my wrap up. Thank you guys for sitting, because I'm pretty sure it's going to be a long video, because I did ramble on a lot, which is usual, especially when I don't film for a while. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching my video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye. Looking at Dr. TV. I'm looking at Dr. TV. <laughs> I'm